How's it going guys? My name's iAlien and today I'm back on another Identity 5 video. Today I will be going over the best and the worst survivors in the game by making a tier list. From worst to best, from F tier to S tier. So let's get right into it. Okay, so before I get into the tier list, I will be explaining how it works. It goes from worst to best. F tier is the lowest, S tier is the best, and so on. Okay, let's get right into the tier list. So, on F tier, the worst survivor in the game, in my opinion, is... Oh, and before I get into the tier list, I do want to say all of this is my opinion so it's not fact i'm not proclaiming it as fact but it's just from my personal experience in high ranked survivor gameplay and high ranked hunter gameplay also from watching many streams of high ranked chinese matter okay now with that out of the way oh and if you have any disagreements if you think someone should be higher or lower on the tier list please comment below so for the worst character in the game and in f tier is lucky guy this is obviously not a surprise he is by far the worst character in the game the game the game itself even tells you not to use him it says, a man who has absolutely nothing must rely on luck to survive. So, you should not use him. He may have no downsides, but if you want a character with no downsides, then pick the thief or even the gardener. There is no reason to ever pick lucky guy unless you are trolling. Okay, let's get into C tier. C tier, the first character in C tier is the gardener. She is not a good character to pick in ranked or really at all. Dismantling chairs does next to nothing for your team. Especially if the hunter sees there's a gardener, he can just pick abnormal and completely counter the gardener. Plus, she does nothing against the soul weaver. The gardener is probably the worst character in the game. Not named lucky guy. Please do not pick her. Yes, she doesn't have too many downsides. But, and sure, you could take out her, uh, you could change out her toolbox. But if you're going through all of that, you might as well pick a different character the next worst character in the game in c tier is the explorer at first the explorer may seem really good as he did to me as well i've seen a lot of people like the explorer a lot but in ranked gameplay he is not good at all when you are facing any experienced hunter he does virtually nothing. When a hunter sees that he's facing an explorer and suddenly the explorer goes missing, he obviously knows that he shrunk. All he then has to do is press the attack button and he'll probably hit the explorer. He also does not have any really good abilities. His only trait is that his Footprints last for one second less and vaulting obstacles will not alert the hunter. The vaulting obstacle thing may be useful, but the footprints really isn't. And he's just not a good character to pick. Let's move on to B tier. In B tier, we have the doctor. The doctor is probably one of the most popular 
characters in the game by far. I see more doctors than any other character. She is a really good character when you are starting off. But once you get into any high ranked play, you should probably stray away from her. She is weak, so that means her vaulting speed is decreased. But she does have the veteran's trait, which lets her get a bigger boost, which does help out. But overall, she is not that good of a character. If you want to heal people, the mechanic, if you want to be a healer, the mechanic is probably a better choice with her robot. And I will be having a video out shortly about a healing build. So if you do want to see that, comment below. But overall, the Doctor is not a horrible character. She's just not a great character. Next on B tier is the Lawyer. The Lawyer is very similar to the Doctor in where he is not a horrible character. He is also just not a great character. He has a map. He has his map, which in my opinion is pretty useless yes he gets to see where the other survivors are which can help but besides that his map is completely useless once you get experience you don't need a map to be able to find ciphers or exit gates you you will have memorized where they are or you can just look up and see where the cipher is his buffs help out his team a lot he buffs the decoding speed the persistence and the i want to say p vaulting speed of his entire team and the closer you get to him the more you get boosted this can be useful and if you are a good lawyer you can win in ranked matches but there are usually just better choices to go with the last character in the b tier and the b tier just to clarify is not a bad tier to be in you can win ranked matches with these characters it's just that there are usually better options or there are better options for all of these characters for the doctor the mechanic is the better option for the lawyer Probably the Thief or Magician are better options. And now for the last character in B tier, the Mercenary, the Forward is a better option. The Mercenary's role is to distract the Hunter. He does this pretty well. If you are a good survivor and you are good at kiting and putting pallets, pallets down at the right time, you can be really good as the Mercenary. The only reason he is not higher on this list is because, in my opinion, the forward does everything he does but better. The forward is also able to make plays to save his teammates, which the mercenary cannot do. If the hunter ever decides to stop chasing you, as he probably will after... 10 seconds if he's really good or maybe after a minute if he's bad once he decides to stop chasing you and he gives up you can do nothing your your decoding speed is slow and you can't do anything to help out your teammates while the forward and i will get more into him later in the tier list he can then help out his teammates and make sure the hunter is focused on him the mercenary has nothing like this and this is why he is only in b tier okay so let's move up to a tier in a tier i have the magician the magician is a very very good survivor and now that we are getting into a tier these are the survivors that you want to pick in high rank matches these are the survivors you should be going for the magician is the best value for your clues if you play survivor 
There is no other value as good as Magician. For only 2,000 clues and for him to be that good, he is very—he is a great value and a great starter survivor to buy. He also does take a lot of skill as well. In order to be a really good Magician, you have to know how to use your illusions correctly. This means that you cannot just uh, use the running in place illusion to where you're running and then you press a, the illusion. Experienced hunters will just track your footprints and may even terror shock you while you are invisible. The magician, in order, I, I will just explain in advance way to use the magician. An example. One example of using the magician in a good using his illusions correctly is when a hunter is teleporting to you you can press the illusion button while you are decoding and then leave the cipher the the illusion will continue to decode while you are running away this is one of the advanced ways to use the illusion and even experienced hunters will get fooled by this. The magician is such a great character to buy because even if you are bad with him, you can still win since he doesn't have really any downsides. But you can grow with him and become a better player and a better magician player overall. And once you become a great magician player, you are one of the most valuable assets to your team. His decoding speed is nice and his ability is also good. The next character in A tier is the Thief. He is the best starter character in the game that you get for free. I have done a video on him called the most underrated survivor in the game. So if you want a further look at him and how to play him, Please check out that video. Okay, so the reason why the thief is so good is because he has no downsides. The only thing that is supposed to be a downside is his increase of calibrations, but this is why he, but this actually makes him even better. The more calibrations you get, the faster you decode. So the thief actually has slightly higher than average decoding speed with no downsides plus 15% vaulting speed the other characters in the game that have increased vaulting speed are the mercenary the forward and the coordinator the mercenary and the forward both have decreased decoding speeds at all, at all times and the coordinator has a 60% decrease decoding speed when a survivor is on a rocket ship the thief has no such thing so he has increased vaulting speed which makes him really good at kiting the hunter and being a great distraction plus he decodes slightly higher than average you should stray away from using his flashlight, though, in my opinion. There are many people that love his flashlight and think it's a great skill, but me personally do not think it's that good of a skill. As, as if you ever do get the stun to work, it's not even that long. And if you are facing a clown hunter, he will just charge you anyway. So you should... The first thing you do as the thief should be to look for a chest to switch out the flashlight. The skills you should be looking for are the football, the robot, the magician's wand. And those are the three best you can get. And the coordinator's flare gun. Those are the four best you can get. And then the ones you don't want is the gardener's toolbox. And the lawyer's map and then anything else is decent the thief is indeed one of the best characters in the game and this is why he is a tier 
let's move on to S tier. This is the best tier in the game. These are the three best survivors to pick in ranked, in my opinion, right now. If you are a good survivor and you pick these characters, you will be able to consistently beat top ranked hunters. The first survivor in S tier is the coordinator. She is fairly easy to get as any top up will give her to you even the dollar one. So she is fairly easy to get. The reason the coordinator is so good is because of one, her increased vaulting speed. Any character with increased vaulting speed is a great character. It's because they are very good at distracting the hunter and running away. On top of this, she doesn't have any decreased decoding speed usually. Her flare gun is also really good and the stun on it when used correctly is the longest stun in the game. She also has increased persistence on the rocket chair. I love increased persistence. Anytime you have increased persistence on the coordinator or the mercenary, this is a great trait to have. The reason why this is such a great trait is because this basically stops camping. As a top hunter, whenever I put a coordinator or a mercenary on a rocket chair, I do not camp. The reason being is if I camp, Instead of the survivors getting three easy decoders, three easy ciphers, they're basically going to get all five ciphers by the time I'm done with her. You never want to get the coordinator out first as you want to get her out last as she will not be able to decode while her survivor, while her teammates are on the rocket chair and because of her increased persistence. That gets me to her only downside as the coordinator, and it's a pretty big one. It's that she has 60% decreased decoding speed when a survivor is on a rocket chair. When a teammate is on a rocket chair, your decoding speed is super slow. Do not even try decoding unless you only have a sliver left to get. You should immediately try and save your teammate or if you have already used your flare gun, get look in toolboxes for the robot to decode for you. The good thing about this coordinator is that she does have the flare gun so this does make saving survivors, saving teammates much easier. This way she's able to save her teammate. Basically, she has one get out of jail free card per game because if her teammates are good at all then the stun is more than long enough for them to escape even if they are facing smiley let's get into the next character in s tier and it is my favorite character in the game it is the forward the forward is basically the mercenary but slightly better his increased vaulting speed is the highest in the game and helps out a ton in distracting the hunter he also has increased pallet pulling pulling speed and this helps out a ton in distracting the hunter next he has increased struggle speed when on balloons this trait in my opinion is basically worthless as it is only 10 percent and there is not a time where this has ever helped me out i have never struggled fr free from the hunter because of that 10 percent increased struggle speed his downside is that he has oh and also the recovery time of hunter stunned by the forward is increased by 15%. So if you do get a hunter stunned 
by the pilot, he will be stunned for even longer. His only downside, and it is a big one, is his decoding speed is decreased by 30%. This is a gigantic decrease to his decoding speed. As the forward, you should never really be decoding as it is very slow, but what you should be doing is distracting the hunter. Also, you should be saving your teammates. When you see a teammate get put on balloons, stun the hunter by running into them, running them into a wall, and this will save that survivor. He is a very good character with many advantages and only one downside. This is why he is so high on the tier list. His ability, the football, is also very good as well as it does have a pretty decent amount of uses. Let's get into the last character on this tier list and it is the mechanic. The mechanic is she is the last character on the tier list but this does not mean that she is the best character in the game just that she is one of the top three best in the game. The mechanic is a very, very good character. She is the best character in the game with good teammates. The only problem with her is if you have bad teammates, she is not good at all. The mechanic comes with 45 Wait, let me see. She, the mechanic comes with increased decoding speed by 35%. This is a lot. She decodes very quickly. The only problem is if a teammate is wounded or on a rocket chair, her decoding speed is decreased by 45%. And this stacks. If multiple teammates are in are wounded then she, her decoding speed is the slowest in the game the only good thing the only thing that she has going for her at that point is the robot is her doll if she the her robot does not have decreased decoding speed so she is able to use her robot to decode and her robot has regular average decoding speed. Her an, Another downside for the mechanic is that her obstacle vaulting speed is decreased by 30%. This is a lot. If a hunter is chasing you and he is good at all, there is a good chance that he will get the mechanic. The mechanic should never be the distraction as that's the job of a coordinator or a forward. The mechanic should never be game chased by the hunter. But if she does get put on a rocket chair, she is able to use her robot if deployed to save herself. This is a big buff and a big advantage. She is the only character in the game that is able to save herself from a rocket chair the mechanic is overall a great character and one that everyone should be using that's it for the tier list i hope you enjoyed if you have any characters that you think should be higher or lower on the tier list please leave it in the comment section below if this video helped you out at all, if it was informative, please leave a like on the video. It helps out a ton. And please subscribe to the channel. I'm on the road to 100 subscribers. Every subscriber counts. And that will be it for the video. Bye.